everybody welcome to conversations at kozidok library where we will bring to you uh, important and interesting people from the world of children's books uh, we might uh, introduce you to authors sometimes illustrators sometimes booksellers and maybe even young readers so we um, unravel the mysteries of uh, how a writer does his or her job or how illustrations or how a book is made or how a book is sold so today we have uh, one of our most favorite people uh, one of our most, uh, most favorite authors shabnam minwala uh she is loved not just by uh, young children learning to read she is loved by teenagers and i'm a fan girl we all are so uh <laughs> so welcome shabnam thank you for doing this we love you absolutely at kozinok library you are such a you have such a huge fan base here and i know i'm embarrassing you already <laughs> yeah but welcome thank you for doing this how have you been how is mumbai treating you well i mumbai is always my favorite so it's always treating me well i'm not sure about viruses at the moment but yeah 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 all good otherwise oh that's good um actually i'm i'm going first i i've, I've had this question on my mind from the time i've started reading your books uh you have like degrees like a thermometer right you have a degree you have an undergrad degree from st xavier's you have a graduate degree from usc uh you also are a fellow from cambridge right yes. yeah so you have studied on three continents i'm guessing you also worked in all of those places right i've worked largely in india okay so but my aim was to go and come back i always wanted to be here yeah but you know one thing as somebody with family in mumbai and and a mumbai kar your love for mumbai is so uh, such a it's almost like a character in so many of your books uh, what what is it about mumbai that you know plays such a huge role in in uh, whether it is that poem in the you know in lucky girl about the girl from khar and the boy from marol or while i was reading what maya saw and i was like the raja bai towers and it took me back to my childhood of you know eating um, ice cream sandwich at parsi dairy it was <laughs> so tell us about your mumbai love it's it's yeah. i guess i'm a mumbai girl and somehow it's been a very important part of me growing up and you know so i think partly what happened is when i went to la you know when you grow up you always think the rest of the world is much more glamorous and like i always say at all interviews I spent a lot of my childhood wishing I was in England, and so I could meet Mr. Pink, who was kind of a magic faraway tree. And th- that was my two-point agenda Aww. with my life. Those were the two things I wanted to do. And I really felt that I was very short-changed living in a grey city without a man who was half a pixie and half a human, <laughs> make children happy, and without a tree which will l- lead you to topsy turvy land and land of birthday parties and land of evil giants and whatever. so uh, yeah and i think you when you then grow up and you go to the other world the so called more glamorous and more wonderful and more magical world and you realize a bunch of things that yeah those places are beautiful but so was your home and uh, you know uh, the tug of bombay always was very great for me and i always wanted to come back to be a journalist for me largely was something where i wanted to come back and talk about issues at home and it was very important for me to come back and write really about children in india and in some ways do something that would improve things whether that is possible or not one doesn't know but that was the aim so anyway so and the funny thing is when i was sitting in la whenever i imagined home i imagined this little patch of kolaba causeway and that was <laughs> home strictly when i came back okay so what happened is then i had my own children and what really alarmed me is all the 6 year olds and 7 year olds would come over for play dates and they would all have gone for fancy holidays and they'd all come when i go over i'm going to go and live in vancouver or i'm going to go and live in brisbane and i think why i mean why those places are so pretty they're so clean and it really 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 saddened me that these children uh, have never opened their eyes and looked at the beauty around us yeah. and okay admit it bombay is not an obviously beautiful creature she is not a you know a sultry siren but there's a lot she's sultry she's sultry she's sultry okay but not a siren yeah. 
but she has a lot going for her. And uh, what I really love about Bombay is the, a, the fact that it is really a mosaic of classes, of uh, communities, of areas. You'll have the snazzy high rises, you'll have the bazaars, which really belong to a village and was probably <laughs> not a village that's just been embraced by concrete. Yeah. And there are all these tiny details. And as a journalist, I spent a lot of my life looking at all those details, climbing up strange buildings. So the city for me is no longer now uh, cement staircases, uh, uh, windows, uh, uh, flyovers. For me, every you know corner, whenever I travel anywhere, I'm telling my girl, this is where I met a face reader. This is where I met a man who uh, uh, tried to kill his mother. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the whole the range. So, uh, uh, this is where uh, the Vidma Chal used to be, where all the poor old Parsi women used to stay surrounded by photographs of all the family who died. So, you know, there's, there's so much in the city that you yeah. do not see superficially. Yeah. And to me, it became very important that I should introduce uh, children to that. In, yeah. Not in a moralistic way, but in a subtle way. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I mean, apart from everything else about your books, I love that part of your books, the Mumbai part of it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sudeshna, Anita, which was... I, no, um, apart from Mumbai, the other thing that uh, really strikes me about all your books is the protagonists are usually always girls. And they're very interesting girls. They're all uh, very different also from each other. Like Maya is different from Nimi, is different from Jia and Urmila and all these other girls. So that's something that I wanted to ask you is that how come you have so many girl protagonists? And how do you, how did you come up with each of these, you know, very different characters? Did you find them around you or how did you find them? Yeah, so I, okay, why girls? I think in a way easy because I was a girl once and I really, uh, whenever I write, one of the big exercises I perform in my head is going back to my girlhood and feel, trying to see what I would feel like in such a situation. So that is that's why girls also I have three daughters and I live in a very female environment and my poor husband he's the only man in this very female house to the extent that once we went for a birthday party and there's a man and he kept staring at us and then finally called his wife and said he's he's that poor guy the only guy with all those women <laughs> so yeah it's a very female world and partly I feel why not girls you know we, we are so used to Harry Potter and we are so used to Percy Jackson and we're so used to girls reading boy books. Yeah. But mm -hmm. boys reading girl books, issue. Yeah. And I keep having boys say, Auntie, when will you write a book where the main character is a boy? Yeah. And to be very honest, you know, when I started what Maya saw, I really wanted the third of the three <coughs> to be a boy. Mm -hmm. but what to do? The boy I started writing, he turned out to like Hawaiian shirts and turned out to <laughs> you know, talk in a plummy British accent. And it's like, he didn't want to be part of this adventure and he talked about not my fault. Not your fault. Problem <laughs> with the chromosomes. <laughs> yeah, so the huge challenge for me is making every character different and it's not always easy. And sometimes I go back and rewrite and rewrite uh, because I'm very afraid that one will echo a number. And mm. it can happen, right? Because in a way you have some templates in your head and... Uh, so, you know, in the beginning, six spellmakers was easy because I'd never written. So I happily bumped them onto paper and even Shy Supergirl was easy because she was very distinct. She had a superpower. But now when I enter a world where I really am trying to make my characters free of superpowers, you know, because in a way, it's always easy if you give them those kind of elements, you can make them different. You can make them distinct. But for me, in a way, Nimi was a challenge because I wanted a girl who was like a lot of other kids. So I didn't want her to be extraordinary. I wanted her to be ordinary extraordinary. Yeah. Meaning, though she is so in the middle of everything, she is very special. Like so many kids around us. And I didn't And want I to think that's why she is loved so much by yeah. uh, so many. I mean, whoever reads them loves, uh, loves the character of Nili. Uh, yeah. Nili. yeah. So I, I just wanted her superpower, if I may, to be just a, an ability to bounce back. And an ability to, you know, view the world with wonder wherever she went and to absorb everything with a great degree of joy. So that is her power, her specialness. It's not as obvious as uh, seeing yeah. colors or whatever, but yeah. 
I have to tell you, uh, we had a um, online book club session last to last uh, week, uh, where um, uh, kids had to present uh, their favorite books. So one of them was talking about Nimi, and oh, she, <laughs> and uh, not only did she talk gush a lot about Nimi, and we said, yeah, yeah, we agree completely with you. Uh, then Radhika, I think, asked her, what would you like to see happen to her later? And she said that she wants uh, Nimi and uh, Sophia, uh, no, yeah. Alicia, Alicia, uh, Alicia. Alicia to become friends. Friends. Good heavens, serious? Yes. Yeah. So you have a wow. <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Yeah. So I said, I said, you know, we, we might be chatting with uh, Shabnam Minwala sometime. What do you think, we, you know, what would you like to tell her? And so she suggested this, you know, in the next Nimi book, if this happens, I'll be so happy. So, uh, so we promised her that we will tell you this. Really glad because, I, you know, in all the trajectories I imagined for her, this was not one of them. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Trust a kid to come up with it. <laughs> yeah, how lovely. Super. Yeah. yeah, so Nimi is beloved for me because she features in three books. So in a way, you know, I've grown, she's grown, we've yeah. grown together. Yeah. I have to tell you when Sudeshna was uh, was editing uh, the the third Nimi book. Yeah. yeah. So she obviously couldn't tell us what was in the book, but <laughs> she would send these cryptic whatsapp messages on our group with oh my god shabnam so funny oh my god oh. nimi is hilarious oh, oh and happy. literally like you know the entire time that she was editing we sort of vicariously <laughs> went along with the book <laughs> because she i think she had such a blast uh, yeah. and then we can see that now with kids it's like i don't think that book is ever on the shelves in the yeah, library. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. So, yeah. And there are kids who um, say they want to reread it, so they keep reissuing it. So Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Good yeah. Good. Yeah. Really cheering news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's loved, really. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, Nimi is one of my all time favorites. I just love oh. reading her and uh, I keep giggling all the time <laughs> and uh, I just marvel at the way you've uh, you know made it so funny that uh, everybody who reads it you know can't help but laugh through that book uh, through all the books actually you know I was so, writing the end of Bizuka on the flight I think <laughs> back from Israel to Bombay and I was giggling so my daughter <laughs> I mean, even I want to read, so she started reading and she was giggling. And the whole aeroplane, you know, I mean, this is quite a grim destination. They were, they were all like looking at me like, what? This is so strange. <laughs> you know, because it's so, so funny. I mean, the kind of situations you think up of and you know, all those, I think right from that first thing where that ball jumps out of the bag and, uh, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, so yeah, no. hilarious to imagine the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> my question is basically, how do you do it? How do you get it, get such humor into the books? Uh, is it something you've always grown with? Uh, is there a, you know, somebody very humorous in your life? Like, what is the source? Please tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My, if you ask my daughters, they will say I'm quite a grim person in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Love the ridiculous. I think even as a journalist, my happiest time of the year was, you know, doing that year-end roundup. Because I and a colleague called Samira, we were in charge of doing this whole page on the year that passed. And we wouldn't do the best books and the best movies. We'd do the oddest things. So we had this whole page and we we really have fun, you know, some model has been taken to court because they were modeled with a snake and uh, first the uh, <laughs> people, the decency club arrives, then the animal activists arrive, then, you know, it, it's just so funny, we just adored it. So I, I, I just like ridiculous things, but I, I do feel that humor is very scary to write because it's the one thing that you never know which will click, whether it will click or not. You know, sad, you can... Hmm do sad you know which buttons to press scary uh, sometimes works sometimes doesn't i don't know correct me if i'm wrong but humor can sometimes go really off it can yeah. be expensive it can it's be very difficult, difficult yeah or just and uh, your kind of humor is like it uh, appeals to both adults and children 
yeah it's like i i mean i have a very juvenile sense of humor but i think like anyone reading uh, the uh, nimi's uh, especially bizupur i think uh, we will roll around now. oh very good i'm totally thrilled yeah so i <laughs> Having said that, whenever I have to write a funny book, which is not that often, mostly, I take a deep breath and I panic. And, but I think <laughs> probably true of all writers at every time, you never know if the writing will remain with you. Yeah. So I think that is a very scary thing in my life. So even with uh, with uh, Lucky Girl, it is so funny. It is hilarious. The entire time I was reading it, and I. I, you know, like I, I know these cookbooks, which, you know, make a big deal of lemon rice, you know, and that sort of, sort of make the most mundane things exotic or the most ridiculous. And I am, I am not a vegan or any of those things. So when I see these vegan books and it makes me laugh. So when I was reading this book, I was, it was too funny. And so how did you like adding on to Anita's question, like the humor in this, the food humor. Uh, it's, it's just so good. Lucky Girl so, started so in a good. strange way. Actually, uh, uh, you know, um, Duckbill had commissioned a book and I was writing Shy Supergirl and I wasn't sure it was going well or badly. And then one day I was in a car and I looked out of the window and I saw a little girl at Marine Drive. So now Marine Drive is such a nice area. And this child obviously had a lovely room. I could see her curtains and all. But she looked so sad. And I just kept wondering what would make a kid like her sad? And it's bizarre from Marine Drive to the kids' school is a seven-minute drive and suddenly I had this whole idea in my head. Then I wrote about a bit wow. of a story and I got totally stuck. I didn't know what to do with it and one day I was putting my girls to bed and they were quite little then and I said, you know, girls, I really don't know how to resolve this story. So they looked at me and said, have some villainous boys. That always makes things fun. So I said, okay, I'll have a couple of villainous boys but I'm still not sure where that'll take me. And then one of my daughters said, and name one of them Gershwin. And you know, it was just that name, it somehow unblocked me. The minute she said Gershwin, I thought of this horrible boy and immediately he became this little tool by which the story moved ahead. Oh. And I always wanted to make it a book about poetry. Okay. In different formats and all. And the funny and amazing thing is there are a whole bunch of primary schools now in the city that use it to teach different poem forms. Limerick and haiku and stuff now. So, yeah. But, but food, yes, seafood, we live in a world of food faddists, right? And uh, we hear them talk all the time and I'm quite a practical person and I feel if you do, don't do anything in excess, everything is okay. You know, just eat what you want. And there are no taboos and no this and no that. So when I hear all the food faddists, it percolates in a way. Yeah. No, I, such, a, such a fun, lovely book, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who was um, you have yeah, any I, uh, favorite humorous authors that you uh, you know look to for inspiration because it's so difficult to write the kind of you know clean humor that you write without like putting down anyone or uh, you know yeah. it's 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 really fun to read but it doesn't put anyone in an uncomfortable situation at the end of it which is really difficult I think. It is difficult, but I, well, so I love a lot of writers. I mean, I read a lot and I love loads of writers. And I mean, I know it of all kinds. I love Roald Dahl. I love Bridget Jones Diving. I think she's, she's quite, she's very cool. And uh, I read a lot of chiclet. I read a lot of other stuff. I read the whole gamut. But I have a rule. If I'm writing a funny book, I avoid reading that same genre. But, because I don't uh, subconsciously want to pick up. Mm -hmm. So if I'm writing horror, for example, I avoid all horror books because I don't want to uh, just go and take the easy way out and use the same kind of device that another book might have without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. but, but I think, come on, all these decades of reading have <laughs> built it up. And uh, yeah, I'm, is there any funny author? Who is it? I love Dick Kingsmith. Uh, who writes all those uh, animal, you know, books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my favorite book, one of my absolute favorite books is uh, uh, Clever Duck, I think, about a duck named Damaris who helps some pigs. And it is just so funny. And we I'm have a lot of Dick Kingsmiths in our library. Yeah. And, and I love the Sophie series. And I love Moen and the Monster, Anushka. Oh, okay. I just, 
you know, we had a rule when the kids were little that we cannot read that book at dinner because my girls would laugh so much that they throw up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a messy process when you have three little ones puking with laughter. <laughs> That's very cute. I mean, not for you now, but lifts my spirits. I just pick it up sometimes when I'm grumpy, and it just makes me grin. Yeah. How lovely! How lovely! Yeah, there's one book that I cannot. Uh, we cannot let you go without talking about when Jia met Urmila. Um, that is a book that I think if if we had to talk about books that sparked off amazing conversations with kids i think that is a book that uh, you know stands apart because whether it was a book club whether it was at the live everywhere that's a book that you know strikes a chord and kids say like these amazing things so uh, what was the inspiration behind that book okay so i wrote to dapil saying hi i'm between books and may i write a book for you may i write a whole book because i love writing whole books you take a couple of weeks you feel i'm a champ i finished a whole book <laughs> and it's a lovely format and you know you know little kids are going to read it and uh, they wrote back saying we'd love you to write a book but this time we want you to go outside the comfortable middle class world and examine the other it can be any other that you want and i was a little cross about it that i thought oh god in 5000 words without too many hard words as it is you have to fit in a whole story and now you have to examine the other and this is like too challenging i thought about it and my first idea was to write a book called too many grannies about a kid with maybe a lot of different marriages or whatever we're having a whole bunch of grannies from different communities then i got real and i looked at the world around me and thought yikes this is a show way to offend a whole lot of people <laughs> maybe later maybe and then i decided that what i you know more and more as a mother what bothers me is that the school i went to and the world i lived in was a much more mixed and accepting world much more tolerant in a way much more accepting of other people having things not having things you looked at the person and i do think that has changed yeah and when i look at the kids around me you know my daughters sort of think somebody's poor who in our times was us it was <laughs> what i was yeah not for the world well poverty is not even there in their uh, world view somehow so uh, and so i started thinking about how to do this so i wanted a story about two girls and when my daughter alia was a baby there was a little baby in the chawl at the corner of our lane uh, called samia 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 baby and she uh, used to cry on the road and mom used to put her to sleep and alia would be crying in the house and i'd be putting her to sleep and we would grin at each other and for my husband and me it was something we really wanted alia and samia to be friends and we did organize a couple of play dates but it petered off very quickly and their lives moved very apart but that kind of came back to me and it kept staying with me and you know what really upset me in a sense is that when i started writing this book I could not find an easy place for the two girls to meet, and I realized that their lives are such concentric circles that the interaction, intersection, is not happening, and that is the truth. Yeah. And so it took me, I think, two or three weeks even to figure out a way that they could meet in an equal way. I mean, I didn't want it to be like a building party where they invite the children from the neighborhood in a Oppo or things, let them see the fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted it to be very equal. Yeah. I wanted my Urmila especially to have a bit of an upper hand. Yeah. So. Yeah, she's spunky. She and I wanted her to be because I think they have kids from another world. That world has to be spunky. Yes. And our kids are like little hot house flowers, and I think <laughs> there's so much for both to learn from each. And I really, really want that that should happen. We talk about ghettoization across. Uh, communities but i think there's ghettoization across class which is even more frightening as frightening yeah it should yeah. be smashed yeah yeah i think yeah i uh, considering how much in a bubble our kids live and grow up in th that this book is quite a it's a lovely it's a very gentle revelation you know and uh, yeah. yeah and we had like a whole um, book club around it with oh, with the really? uh, yeah with like 7 and 8 year olds okay. and it was the things they said about their parents and the parents views were quite uh, you know uh, they revealed a lot you know <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, it is 
it is unpleasant for you, scary, and it is important. So I do. I often read this book when I go to you know uh, schools with uh, which are actively trying to encourage integrate, yeah, integrate, include mixed backgrounds, and the kids are so happy. They keep saying, "This is our story." I think you have written our story, and wow, uh, it uh, yeah. feels good. But it is unfortunately not everyone's story, and I think that is something we should be looking at very carefully. And, uh, yeah. 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 That's another thing. Uh, uh, yeah. That's another thing that there's like you have such a vast uh, variety in your writing, and you've been writing a lot of picture books also lately, and yes. uh, for Pratham, and uh, then you have these chapter books, and then you have books for uh, older kids and young adults. How do, how does it how do you make that shift in your head uh, each time? I like to do different times because I feel you know you you're entering a new room in a way. Mm. You're not going back to that same space and saying now what can I find here that I haven't written before. <clears throat> you're going somewhere else and starting afresh, and then I don't mind revisiting after. So even Nimi, for example, I took a break between each book. Yeah, I didn't want it to be too mm. uh, similar. And uh, yeah, so my new book with Harper is going to be a horror book, which yes. I. Pretty excited about. I wasn't sure it would come off, and I still, you know, the proof. There's of a the lot of magic and um, supernatural happening in your books, right? And they, you have that book of boots also with uh, Pratham, and it's so cute. Boots, yeah. yeah. So actually, they called me and said, "Write a book for us." So I said, "Look, I'm writing a horror book. My head is full of horror. I don't mm-hmm. know what I can write for you just now." So then, and together we said, "Why don't we do something about ghosts?" <laughs> <laughs> it just happens, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But I love scary books. I personally love reading scary books. So mm. I think that is something. And this horror book, uh, do I? Can I tell you a little about how it started? Yeah, please tell yeah. us, please. <laughs> started with, you know, my daughter Alia got a phone, and my husband likes. You know, he wanted her, her number to kind of spell her name. So he went and harassed the phone wallah and said, "Give this number, give this number." So finally, they looked on the computer and gave him a number. And every day, instead of for Alia getting phones for her, uh, calls for herself, for messages for herself, all she was getting was uh, calls and messages for this guy called Vishesh. And it was getting oh really spooky <laughs> because people kept messaging and saying, "Vishesh, where are you? Where the hell are you? Why have you vanished? Why are you ghosting us?" Oh and then one day, there was a call, and this woman freaked. Vishesh, this is Priya, mommy. How dare you not call me for so long? And at that point, he started wondering, where is Vishesh? And what happened to him? And you know, and that was for me the starting point because this girl Saira starts get, has a similar sort of situation, and she starts looking for the for this missing individual in her life, Akash, and she treads into she sort of walks. Unwittingly into a situation where she really should not have ventured, no. and things turn very ugly. Yeah. So. So when is the book out? When everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's, it's all done. It's in typeset. It's all. So oh, okay. Okay. So a few months. Yeah. Good. Something to look forward to for us. Yes. And well, I'm doing a m- murder mystery set in two locked down buildings. Yes, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> Yeah, a little Rio be the wish. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as the only non-writer here, can, can I ask you a little bit about your writing? Uh, in the sense, do you have like a specific, um, uh, you know, uh, sort of way in which you write? A certain time of the day? Do you need to prep yourself in a certain way before you write? Like, do you have any of those things? Um, <laughs> um, there was a time when I was a very fussy writer. I mean, fussy to the point of I needed a clean day. If I stepped out of the house in the morning, I would say my whole day is gone. I can't write now. Uh, but that doesn't work. And I wanted a full idea, start to finish. I wanted everything. I wanted every plot twist. And I realized that that was really stupid and counterproductive. Because also, however much you plan, your characters take over and they do their own thing. And they, uh, you know, the book moves in in an organic way. So I decided just to go with the flow a little. So now, in normal times, and we are not in normal times, but in normal times, the middle, the moment my girls sit in their school bus or the car at you know five past eight in the morning, I sit at my computer and I don't shop for bhaji and I don't look at big basket and I don't talk to friends and I don't entertain electricians till about lunchtime. 
so I sit in my pajamas and I just drink endless cups of green tea and lemon tea and hot and chai and whatever and I run. Wow. And then I tackle the world. And then if I have time, I continue. Um, of course, then when there are deadlines approaching, I write till 2 a.m. and all. But I found that my really productive and the creative time is that 8 to 1 o'clock. And, okay. and my mom finds it disgusting. Every time she'll come down, she lives in the same building. You're still in your pajamas. <laughs> yes, but I've done 1,200 words. <laughs> So the, the writer and the editor have a lot in common and that is all I shall say. <laughs> certain yeah. love for a garment. A certain yeah. garment. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> They're the best to work in. Or to do anything else in. <laughs> no, but people if, if, if you guys come up with the sort of stuff you come up with, I guess the pajama works. So. <laughs> yeah. And it also creates the sense that, you know, she's not to be disturbed. She's not decent at the moment. So let's <laughs> so, um, so do you want to read a little bit from any one of your books? No. Which I ever... a reading from Nibi. I was looking for a part, a bit, so I can give a little bit of a background. And I'll read from Bidu for birthday. Uh, as the... <laughs> the title suggests uh, Nini's just had her birthday. Um, she expected it to be this highly glorious day, but it got a bit scuppered because instead of buying regular chocolates, her mother decided to buy a, a creation called Chocolate Jawar Banana Bite. And Nimi doesn't even like bananas, but because it was on sale at the health food uh, uh, website, that's what her mom got. And... Uh, Things have turned a little ugly because she lied and claimed it was a marshmallow and then one person, her arch enemy, nem nemesis uh, Sumit, who uh, has cottoned on to the fact that it's banana and he's been trying to spread the word that this very unglamorous food was fed to the whole school. <laughs> Meanwhile, for her birthday, Nimi has got a phone and uh, Nimi has fat fingers, a bit like her creator and sends awkward messages, a bit like her creator. <laughs> When she writes to Maria, her friend Maria, instead of writing Maria, she writes malaria and irritates Maria to bits. Uh, when she writes to another girl, she calls her tarantula, a tara. She calls her tarantula and pisses that girl off like big time. But the real problem comes when she writes to her class teacher, Miss Atmaja, who is a very not nice person, very pale, very grim and very hating of Nimi. So when uh, everybody has to talk about what they are taking for their caring, sharing lunch in school and I'll read out a little bit about what happens. So this scene is in the principal's office. Nimi has sent her message. Miss Atmaja has gone ballistic. Wants Nimi expelled from the school this very minute, preferably five minutes before this very minute. And she's gone storming into Mr. Bakshi, the principal's office. Nimi is there and because... Uh, of the situation of Nimi's got a whole bunch of cheerleaders along with her. She didn't ask them to come, but they've all decided to land up there with their different uh, approaches to the, the situation. So I'll just read a little bit, okay? Um, on Friday, the class, so this is what um, Miss Atmaja is telling Mr. Bakshi. On Friday, the class made a chat for the caring, sharing lunch. Everybody had to tell me what they were bringing. Every single student was respectful and serious, except Nimi Taruvala. Do you know what she called me? Do you know? No, booming Mr. Bakshi admitted. She called me dead Miss Asthma. Nimi opened her mouth to explain. Somebody else bit down a giggle. Do you know what Nimi offered to bring? The English teacher continued. She said she would bring children nuggets and Harish Bhai paste. I meant chicken nuggets and Harisa paste, Nimi tried to say, but nobody was listening. Who is Harish Bhai? Mr. Bakshi asked instead. A banana, Sumit Yaul. A banana, banana. Oh, a banana, booming Mr. Bakshi, boomed in reply. Then I think it is okay if you make Harish Bhai into a paste. Yeah? 
please, Mr. Bakshi. The point here is, Ms. Ash Akbarahi is but Mr. Bak but Rohan spoke over her. Harish Bhai is Lily's driver, he supplied, as he unpeels his yellow quilt. Harish Bhai wears spectacles. Lily's driver is a banana? Mr. Bakshi asked. And weekly, he had the same feeling he got when he was confronted with, with a 1,000 word jigsaw, 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, in which 800 pieces were blue sky and blue sea. <laughs> never cracked those puzzles and he was getting the, same, the feeling that he was never going to crack the story either. The feeling intensified when Ali began to speak. Nimi is a bit, bit hasty when she types, he said. She made chicken into children by mistake. I think we are missing the point, Miss Atmaja said. The point is that there is something very wrong with Nimi. Hey. So that was oh, this is so fun. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Oh my god, it's so funny, so funny. <laughs> so what is with you and health food? And, and the fun you make of health food? <laughs> I'm a, I don't know if you know, but I've been doing a food column for years and years and years. Okay. I, I, so in time, I used to run a column called In Search of the Perfect Whatever, Tadburi Chicken, Pao, Kima, Tomato, Garlic. And I loved editing it. I didn't write them all. I wrote occasionally, but I was the editor. And now I do a food column for business line. So food plays a big part in my life. I mean, I love, I love the stories around food. I love the stories that food tell us, you know, about, the, about our history, about, you know, so many assumptions we make about whatever, about biryani being Indian food. And then you realize that there's been a long story. And yeah. it's ever so simple. And if you listen to those stories, I think you're, you want the world also changes a little bit. You also realize that nothing is one thing. Everything comes together. It's a conflict. Yeah. So yeah, I love food. I love writing about food. And food creeps into all my books. Yeah. Even the horror book, my husband said, what is this? Why are these kids always eating? When they're <laughs> and all these horrible things and they're sitting at a table and eating. <laughs> kids eat. It yeah. doesn't matter what happen else happens. The first question will be, what's for dinner? Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, on yeah. that, uh, I think on that happy note, we can uh, end today. Uh, so much. It was <laughs> such fun to see you and see you soon in Bangalore or Mumbai. Thank you so much. Thank you. It yes. was really lovely. We still remember your when you came to CNCLF. And it's we'll been, it, it was one of our, yes, you must come again and you must visit a new library. Figure it out. Whenever. Yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank thank you and we hope thank you so everyone much. will keep reading we'll all your books yeah and we are waiting for the next ones yeah and the and the nimi one too so, remember the the, tw the twist in the tail yeah, yeah, i'm quite alarmed <laughs> <I suggest. laughs> that's funny well actually it could be it could be yeah it could happen uh. please tell nimi <laughs> Okay, so Nimi, you have to change your mindset a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and Alisha, you have to have a brain transplant. Yes, yes. I think Alisha can have a brain transplant. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. You op you uh, are, uh, are the first guest on Conversations at Cozy Nook Library oh, and okay. we couldn't be happier because this is just the most perfect start to uh, the series. So, um, thank you. Thanks. And um, yeah, and we hope to read more of you and see more of you. So um, if we do make that Kozindu goes uh, to Mumbai trip, the three of us, uh, yeah, yeah. you I shall take, take hopefully take, take us to all the Kolaba places. Yeah, I'll take you on a Wat Maya saw tour. Oh, oh that'll be lovely. Oh. All the clues, yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be super. <laughs> we'll start at Xavier's and go forward. Absolutely. And Kolaba, of course, my Kolaba book will soon one day come. It so, will come one day soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Lovely. Kolaba Pro. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. We shall go to Olympia. Yes. So, uh, thank, <laughs> thank you so much and um, stay safe. 